Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Big Fight Field channel where we speak the truth, we're honest, and we give out takes on AEW. It is Wednesday night, April 12th, 2023. I am joined by my co-host, Cameron Johnson, tonight. Cam, what is up, man? How are you? What did you think of tonight's AEW show? Yeah, man, I thought tonight's... Uh... And I thought the night's AEW show was excellent tonight, man. Uh, sorry for the delay. Uh, sorry for the de- uh, sorry for the delay. Speaking, I fixed my microphone. My mic, uh, not my grant. Fix my uh, audio. Yeah, I didn't hear what you said, but I, uh, first part. So I'm sorry about that. But I got that situated, man. I thought Dynamite tonight was a really good show. But I thought Dynamite tonight was a really good show. You know, the build, the double or nothing continues. You know, the build, the double or nothing continues to impress. Uh, continues to oppress the elite versus the BCC. Uh, the elite versus uh, BCC, to me, that is the best view going right on all wrestling. That view continues to feel very, that view continues to feel very nicely. And the, uh, in the uh, four pillars, uh, fatal four-way match, uh, double or nothing continues to be, uh, continues to be great build. So overall, although this was a hell of a show. Yeah, man, I really enjoyed what they delivered tonight as well. Um, with the show coming from Milwaukee. I also thought last week was tremendous, and I can't forget our other uh, co-host, Wesley Williams, is not here tonight. He's enjoying a very nice vacation in Tampa, Florida. It's a beautiful beautiful area. I know all about Tampa, Florida. Hope he's having a good time. Hope we're able to get him back on the channel next week. But the one thing that I want to talk about, Cam, that took place last week was the big announcement by Tony Khan. And when I watched it, when I replayed the show on Thursday and I saw, I mean, obviously I found out on Twitter Wednesday night when I, when I, when I went on Twitter and saw the announcement, but, um, as soon as I saw Tony standing there with Nigel McGuinness, I knew AEW was to make an announcement that they're going to the UK and they're going to London, England. But the big story here is AEW is having their first ever stadium show at London Wembley Stadium, which is a 90,000 seating capacity. The show is taking place August 27th, so we have a long way to go. But this is absolutely a huge deal for not only AEW, but it could potentially be... Uh, Sending shockwaves in WWE if AEW has a huge attendance on this show for the August 27th event. Uh, Cam, I need to get your thoughts on this gigantic announcement. I think one of the bigger announcements Tony's ever done in AEW. Uh, I think this, I think I'm, I'm going to agree with you, man. For once, Tony Khan actually had a big announcement, man. You know, we used, you know, we used the uh, big announcement thing, you know. We use the uh, Tony Khan as a big announcement uh, on Dynamite as a meme at this point. You know, had a meme at this point. You know, whenever the ratings are down, Tony Khan has to go out there. You know, Tony Khan has to go out there and uh, give a big announcement. <laughs> he can give a big announcement. I saw all the uh, jokes online. Uh, Tony Khan's going to laugh at Cody Rhodes for 30 straight. Uh, Tony Khan's going to laugh at Cody Rhodes for 30 minutes straight uh, as, his, as, his big, you know, as his big announcement, something like that. I laughed, but not nah, this is a. No, this is actually a big announcement and one that I think is overdue. One that I think is overdue. Uh, and was uh, probably, you know, and not even probably, it was delayed in my opinion because of the pandemic. But because of the pandemic, but with the pandemic being over, but with the pandemic basically being pretty much over, uh, them getting a show in the UK is going to be going to be awesome. Because you know that UK crowd is going to go ballistic. That UK crowd, that UK crowd is one of the best crowds all year. All year, they were ballistic for Clash of the Castle last year. They're gonna be they're gonna be ballistic for Money in the Bank. And they're gonna be ballistic for Money in the Bank this July, and they're gonna go ballistic for this show, man. The fans in the UK, you know, the fans in the UK never, you know, the fans in the UK never let you down. You know, this is gonna be and this is gonna be a damn good show. It's gonna be a this is gonna be an excellent show here. I have all these expectations in the world here. Uh, my only question about this show. Is that since they're doing this as a pay per view, if they're still running all out a week later, a week later, if they're still running all out, 
how much is this show going to cost? Because I'll be honest with you, Joseph. I'm not going to be honest with you. I'm going to be honest with you, Joseph. WWE can get away with putting a pay-per-view between two weeks, you know, between, you know, WWE can get away with putting a pay-per-view a week apart because all the pay-per-views are basically free on Peacock with Peacock being 10 bucks a month. AEW can't get away with this shit, man. Because I'm going to be honest with you, man. If Tony Khan is trying to charge me $60 for the all-in show, the $60 for all out like he usually does, one of these shows, I'm going to have to prioritize, man. One of these shows is not getting watched. So I don't know how that's going to work in price and everything. They got to figure that out. But man, it's going to be fun to see the biggest crowd in AEW history in, in the UK. That is going to be a fun show, my God. Well, if that's the case, then I'm definitely taking the All In show because that's that's going to be that that could be one of the biggest shows of the entire year, and I'm curious to see what the capacity is going to be. The seating capacity at Wembley Stadium is ninety thousand, and I think the goal for AEW would be fifty to sixty thousand fans if they could get that many fans. At Wembley Stadium, I think that's a really big success. What do you think? I'm gonna agree with you, man. I don't think they're getting. 50, I don't think they're getting ninety thousand in the building. I, I just don't. I just don't think they're there yet. But I, you know, I, I just don't think they're, they're there yet. But them getting six, but them getting fifty, sixty thousand plus, man, I think it's very. I think it's very doable. You know, if Tony Khan has the right. You know, if Tony Khan has the right attractions for that show. You know, for that show, you know, they're going to feel, you know, they're going to be trying to fill a stadium. If they can get, if he can get the right attractions and for that show, you know, if he can get the right attractions in for that show, then you can absolutely do it. I know people aren't going to want to hear it. I don't want to hear it either, but I don't want to hear it either. But Goldberg's a name that could be in, but Goldberg's a name that could possibly be on that show. You know? But Goldberg's a name that could possibly be on the show. We saw Jeff Hardy. Come back tonight of Jeff Hardy. You know, we saw Jeff Hardy come back tonight. If Jeff Hardy can keep his nose clean, if he doesn't get in trouble, knock on knock on wood on that. I'm gonna knock on wood on that one. I love Jeff Hardy. I hope he can stay clean and everything. You know, if you can do that, having Jeff Hardy on that show is gonna be a big attraction. Sting on that show is gonna be a big attraction. Uh hell, maybe Drew Gall hell, maybe Drew Galloway on that show is gonna be in the hell, maybe Drew Galloway on that show. That's gonna be a big attraction. But does Tony Khan have enough attractions? Does he have enough attractions under contract? Can he come up with enough attractions in order to fill that stadium? Because if he can, it's going to be a big success for him. So this is an absolutely a great. This is absolutely a great decision here by AEW. I, I love it. I'm looking forward to see what they can do. Here's the thing, and then we're going to get into tonight's show. You need to have you. You have to pull out the stops. You you have to go. All in, basically, with the show name. You have to go all in for this. This is going to be their biggest show of the year. This is their version of WrestleMania. If they can get CM Punk back for the show, they do it. If they can get, as much as I don't want to say it, Goldberg's a big name. If they can get Goldberg to do a one-off appearance, putting over somebody, they should do it. Only if he's going to come over to put over somebody. If they could get Okada from New Japan to go on that show, they do it. If they could get Osprey to go on that show, they do it. Tony Khan has to have this lineup. He has to stack the show up. That's it. That's just as simple as it is. But we have, which makes me excited, Cam, is we have months upon months upon months to make dream matches and matches that we want to see for this particular show. And I'm very excited. Um, before we get into um, the review the, the review tonight, if you haven't already, I dropped my first 76ers video uh, yesterday. Talk about this series against the Brooklyn Nets. If you haven't already, be sure to go ahead and check that out. And Cam, I know you're a basketball guy. You love basketball. Who do you who do you think is going to be in the NBA Finals this year? Really quickly. Uh, coming out the East, I got no. Uh, coming out the East, I got Milwaukee. I mean, that's, I mean, that's pretty self-explanatory. They got the best player. That's pretty self-explanatory. They got the best player in the NBA. Honest, uh, honest. They got the best defense. You know, they they got the best defense in the league. 
you know, they got the best defense in the league and they can stay healthy. I think Milwaukee uh, is representing the East and out West. West is a little tough, but I'm going to put a big caveat on if. If they can stay healthy, I got the Phoenix Suns. I got Bucks and Suns in the finals. As if the Suns can stay healthy. Because if they can stay healthy. Because we, we know Kevin Durant didn't have some injuries. Chris Paul is injury prone. Devin Booker didn't have some injuries. You know, I know they only, I know they only got like four, I know they only got like five people on their roster, <laughs> but uh, if they stay healthy, I got butts and sons. All right, I I see you. Uh, you don't can't underestimate the 76ers, man. You know, we'll see what happens, but it should be interesting. Um, let's get into tonight's Dynamite show live from Milwaukee. You kicked off hey, the man. show. Hey, man. Yo. And before we start, I'll say this about the 76ers. If Doc Rivers, if Doc Rivers can coach a playoff series, and if James Harden can show up, and if Joel Embiid don't get the bubble guts, if he don't get injured, then I like their chances. But I don't trust Doc Rivers in a seven game series. I don't. Doc Rivers is a terrible coach. I don't trust him. So, just me. I think if they don't get past the second round, he's on the hot seat. So I mean, he's on the hot seat going into the playoffs. But if, if they, again, don't get past the second round, he's in trouble. He's going to be in deep trouble, I think. Um, let's get into tonight's Dynamite show. Darby Allen and Swerve kicked off the show. Um, Swerve, thank the Lord, has new friends. He had no longer has Parker Boudreaux, and he no longer has Trench. He has the Embassy. He has uh, the Gates of Agni. And Brian Cage, which, breaking news, which was broken this week, I think yesterday, Brian Cage signed an extension with AEW. So there was rumors that he would be leaving AEW, going to WWE, dropping the Ring of Honor six-man belt at Supercard. He won, he re-signed, and now he's paired up with Swerve. Um, These are the right people with Swerve, in my opinion. What they were doing with him, with Parker Boudreaux, was just not working. And those guys were terrible. I'm glad Swerve got some legit guys to back him up. Uh, This match against Darby Allin was insanely good. Uh, This was probably, uh, you could tell that these guys had tremendous chemistry with each other. And they showed it in the ring. And for that, they gave each other, they had an outstanding match. Darby Allen got the win with the Last Supper and defeated Swerve Strickland to open up Dynamite, protect Swerve a little bit. And uh, Swerve, this wasn't the last of him tonight, but uh, we'll get to him later on. Darby Allen got the, got the win in the opening match. And then we'll talk about the segment with MJ after, after we talk about the match. Cam, what did you think about this opening match, man? Outstanding, I thought. Well, this is an outstanding opening match for these two guys, man. Uh, I really enjoyed this a lot. You know, I really enjoyed this a lot. Uh, to me, uh, you know, in my opinion, uh, you know, in my opinion, Darby Allen is the best guy in wrestling who, in terms of going in there, and it, it, in terms of going in there, and it's just looking like the guy is getting his absolute ass kicked. Like to me, Darby Allen is the best at that. He, he has the best ability to make it, you know, to you know, he has the best stability to go in there and you're like, oh shit. You know, like, oh shit, Darby Allen is legitimately getting the hell beat out of him, man. So I, that's what I love. That's one thing I love about Darby Allen. Actually. But that's one thing I love about Darby Allen. I thought this was a really good match with Swerve. Uh, I'm happy Swerve has new friends because uh Boudreau and Trench, really? That's the group we put. Like, who thought that was a good idea? Who thought that was a good idea to put Trench? But, but I like Parker Boudreau. I, I, like, I, I like Parker Boudreau. I think Parker Boudreau has potential. I think, you know, I think Parker Boudreau has potential. He, he's got to get better. But I like Parker Boudreau. But Trench, really? Fuck is Trench. I don't know. I've seen him doing that on us. I've been being linked up with the mobile affiliates I like. Uh, I like seeing Prince Nana on TV. I like Prince Nana. But uh, I thought this was a really good match here with uh, Darby. I thought this was a really good match here with Darby and Swerve. And uh, Darby gets the win as he should. And, and Darby gets the win as he should. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, man. I'm not a really big fan of uh, 
you know, I'm not really a big fan of seeing Sawyer lose like this, but in there with Darby Allen, it makes sense because Darby Allen is the one wrestling for the world title on pay per view in about four years, the one wrestling uh, for the world title on pay per view in about five weeks. Sawyer's not. So Sawyer can take a loss here. He'll be fine. But uh, I thought this was an excellent opening. Match. And I feel like if Darby wasn't on the quest for the world title, I think Swerve probably would have gotten the win during this match. Maybe they can run it back sometime later on in the year and Swerve pick up the victory that he didn't get tonight. That's something that I would like to see later on um, this year in AEW. Uh, the world champion MJF came out and we had a great back and forth promo between MJF and Darby Allen, Sting came out to put over Darby Allen, put over professional wrestling, and put. He did say that his time's not. He doesn't have much time left, but Darby Allen does have a lot of time. He's just getting started, and he put over Darby Allen, saying he's going to be the next um, AEW World Champion. Darby Allen proved that you know he can somewhat cut a promo. It wasn't terrible, and MJF delivering really good bars um, about Darby Allen. Overall, I, I really enjoyed this, uh, but I think that ju- I, th- I thought the, the promo uh, with Jungle Boy was better than this one. That's just my opinion, though. Um, I want to get your take on it, though, this build for the Fatal 4-Way match. I think the build for the Fatal 4-Way is coming along pretty much. I think the build for the 4-Way, I think the build for the 4-Way, uh, uh, it's coming along very nicely. You know, it's coming along very nicely. I thought this promo with, uh, you know, I thought this promo with Darby and uh, MJF. You know, I thought this promo with Darby and MJF. I thought it was good. I, I thought it was a good promo. I liked Sting. You know, I thought it was good. I liked Sting coming out. You, you know, I liked Sting. You know, I liked uh, Sting coming out. And, you know, I liked Sting coming out uh, for this promo. You know, trying to really hype up. You know, really, you know, really trying to hype up. Uh, Darby Allen, I really did like that. And I said this, you know, and I said this a lot. I sent this to you and West in the chat. I think Sting is a top five signing in AW. I think Sting is a top five signing in, uh, in AW history. Oh, well, he's done for Darby Allen. has been absolutely incredible. You know, he's done for Darby Allen. has been absolutely incredible. And I thought this is so overall, I really enjoyed this. So overall, I really enjoyed this segment. And I enjoyed this, uh, I enjoyed this segment and I enjoyed this, uh, I'm looking forward to the four-way uh, to the pay-per-view. I think there's only one more promo that MJF has to cut with, with at least the only the one individual, and that's Sammy Guevara. That's yet to happen yet, um, but I, I like it, man. It's building into a really nice match on a big stage uh, coming up Memorial Day weekend, which is what is probably uh, going to happen in a couple weeks in Las Vegas. Um, we then got into um, TNT Championship Open Challenge. And, man, w- when did we start doing squash matches for the TNT Championship? Because, I mean, this is sad. At this point, Cam, it's just getting sad. And the more this happens, like, we've talked about it a, a numerous amount of times on the channel. The more this happens, the less I care about the title. And it's like it's an all-time low right now with the TNT Championship in AEW. And yet we're getting another match next week between Wardlow and Powerhouse Hobbs for the TNT Championship. And I- I'm just not a fan, bro. I'm just not a fan. Hobbs squashes Silas Young. They squash him in his hometown. And uh, then Wardlow wrecks Hobbs' new car. And they're just doing a match next week. So, what are your thoughts, man? Do you have the same mindset as me? I, I do have the same mindset as you, man. I do have the same mindset as you. Uh, when they, anyway, when they announced this match, I was actually kind of happy. I was, you know, I was actually kind of looking forward to it. Uh, I, I, I like Silas Young. I do. The only, you know, I like Silas Young. I do. The only man on AEW television tonight was Silas Young. He was the only man in AEW, you know what I mean? We had a, you know what I mean? We had a bunch of guys go on the ring, and they, you know, we had a bunch of uh, guys go on the ring, you know, pretend to be wrestlers. You know, they had to tumble around the ring. Silas Young was the only real man on AEW Dynamite to make on AEW uh, Dynamite to make that. So I was looking forward to seeing Silas Young in the ring. I uh, really was, you know. I thought, and then, uh, you know, 
you know, I found him a Hobbs. Uh, could have been really good. Would have been really weird. You know, would have been really weird to see, uh, you know, to see Silas Young working baby. You know, uh, it would have been really weird to see Silas Young working baby face. You know, to be working baby face, but they're in his hometown. So I wouldn't mind that. But this being squashed to me was a, just a complete waste of time. It was a complete waste of time. I don't understand why they couldn't have just done this match on Rampage. You know, I just don't understand why they couldn't have done this match on Rampage and actually have it be a competitive back and forth match between uh you know between Hobbs and uh Silas Young. But I don't know about you, Joseph. I'm not feeling this Will Hobbs thing he's so far. I know he just won the t- I know he just won the chain. I know he just won the title. Not too. I know he just won the title not too long ago. So like I'm trying to hold out on you know. So like I'm trying to hold out on judging him because we are only like a couple weeks here. But so far, man, this rain this rain is not it. So far, this rain is not it for me. I don't know what they are doing with Will Hobbs. I don't I don't understand the pairing. And I don't understand the pairing with him and QT Marshall. Where does that come from? I love Q. I, I like QT. I like the uh, QTV segments. That, uh, I like the QTV skits. They're doing all with them. Uh, I don't know if you. Uh, I don't know if you're gonna get this reference, Joseph. But I don't know if you're gonna get this reference, Joseph. But it reminds me of the uh, Robertsi thing from Victorious, where Robbie Shapiro, <laughs> the Robertsi thing on you know, Victorious, and Robbie Shapiro uh, started Robertsi. That's what this reminds me of here. Uh, so it's a fine gimmick. It's just I don't understand why Will Hobbs has to be a part of it. Number one, and two, this is not what I was expecting from Will Hobbs' TNT title. This is not. And this is not, uh, I mean, this is a complete waste of time. And why are we doing Will Hobbs and Wardlow next week on, on Dynamite? I don't understand that at all. Because what's either going to happen is they're going to beat, because since AEW does not do, they don't do a lot of DQ finishes on, on TV, what's going to happen next week is Wardlow's going to lose again, or Will Hobbs is going to be a transition, or Will Hobbs is going to drop the title. It, the last thing that TNT title needs is for is for it to flip flop back and forth like this. I don't know what the hell they're doing, man. I don't know what they're doing with the TNT title. I, I don't care about it anymore. Wardlow came out and I, I just didn't care. Wardlow came out, I just did not care. I hate to say it, but I, I just did not care when he came out. It's a, this suit to me has been a dud. Uh, just end it, end it, please. And get get something better for Will Hobbs to do this TNT. Here's my thing with. Will Hobbs, his reign was actually off to a great start. He defeated both of the Lucha Bros on back-to-back episodes of Rampage to retain the TNT Championship. My problem is, like you said, why is he in this QTV skit, which is obviously a a comedy thing. Will Hobbs is not comedy. Will Hobbs is a serious man. Um... The fact that he's in this goofy shit with Aaron Solo and whoever the, the woman is and QT Marshall, it's it lowers it lowers his legitimacy, I think, in my opinion. And as far as next week goes, I think Wardlow probably wins the title back. And uh, where, if you remember. Pittsburgh was where his career started. I think that's his story. And next week, Dynamite's in Pittsburgh. So I think Wardlow is probably going to win back the TNT Championship next week. And they'll build to a blow-off match at double or nothing, which I, I won't care about. And um, I don't understand it, though, because like, they not... I, I don't understand it though. I, I don't understand it though. And, and you know who and you know who are we to you know and, and you know who are we to criticize the booking of the TNT Championship? You know because we God forbid if we criticize the booking of uh, Wardlow in the TNT Championship, what the fuck they're doing over there? QT Marshall might listen to this. Uh, QT Marshall might listen to this episode. Just and QT Marshall might put us on blast. And QT Marshall might put us on blast and go, well, how dare you criticize the booking? You don't know the inner workings of professional wrestling, blah, 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 blah. I know that's stupid shit. So how dare we, Joseph? So how dare we criticize what AEW is doing with uh, the TNT Championship and Powerhouse Hobbs? It's just, 
I mean, they're stupid. You know what I mean? They're stupid. It's devaluing with the title, the flip-flopping it back and forth. They need to keep making a decision. They want to put the championship on Wardlow or World Hobbs and just build around them. You know, and keep the TNT title on them for a solid six months. A solid six months. Keep championship on them for a solid six months. Come up with some stories. Come up with some feuds you want war. Come up with some stories you want. And come up with some feuds and stories. You won't revolve around the TNT Championship. And don't flip the title for at least six months. Don't change the title for at least six months. Please. That's all I'm asking. That is all I'm asking. But, at this yeah. point, I can't even remember the last time we've had a long, lengthy reign for the TNT Championship. I think it was Sammy Guevara, which is a very that, – that's last year, bro. And – it, it's gone down ever since Miro dropped the title, but I, I don't know what they're doing. I think they're going to give the title to Wardlow next week, which, I mean, it's a lose-lose situation. So, I don't know. I don't care anymore. We'll probably be arguing about this again um, next week. But let's get into uh, let's get into bigger and better things going on right now in AEW, and that is the Blackpool Combat Club and the Elite, we have a satellite promo by Kenny Omega who warns the Blackpool Combat Club that we're not going to give you violence. Instead, we're going to give you something that you're not ready for. And tonight, we had uh, John Moxley and Claudio beat the shit out of Michael Nakazawa and Brandon Cutler, both of them gushing out blood. Cutler got pinned with the paradigm shift. Nakazawa got some hits in there, got a couple chops. Um, Brandon Cutler, weak offense in his goofy outfit. Moxley ripped off his mask. I was biting him in the face. Um, and then afterwards, after Yuta... Uh, Claudio and uh, Mox were beating up on Cutler and Nakazawa. Kenny Omega comes out and he's standing on the stage and entering in the ring were Matt and Nick Jackson, the Young Bucks. They super kicked Claudio and Willa Yuta and they brawled with the Blackpool Combat Club. Kenny Omega found a box underneath the ring, had Moxley lined up at the corner. He had a screwdriver in his hand, which last week the Blackpool Combat Club took a screwdriver and hit it on Hangman Page's eye. So when he comes back, he's probably going to be wearing an eye patch. And Brian Danielson was calling him an amateur all last week. Moxley moved, and the screwdriver was stuck in the turnbuckle, and the Blackpool Combat Club retreats from the elite cam not only is this feud the best thing in AEW, heading toward double and nothing this is probably ever since wrestlemania has been over this is and basically the since the return of brian danielson because that's what really kick-started this feud in my opinion this has really been the best thing in all of wrestling i mean the intensity in this feud is off the charts the story of the elite getting back together to take down uh, the bullies of AEW or the uh, the assassins of AEW, the Blackpool Combat Club. It is absolutely fantastic what these guys are doing on week-to-week television. And it's building into the best thing going into Double or Nothing. And I, I'm, just, I'm just patiently waiting every week, man. When we get to Wednesday, I'm like... AEW's coming on tonight. What is the next move in the Elite in the Blackpool Combat Club? Because that's how interested I am in this feud right now. What are your I thoughts? Am, I am, man. I'm in agreement with you, man. This is the best feud in wrestling uh, since you know since the Sammy stuff has ended. I think this is uh, I think this is uh, for I think this is overtaking the blood. But only, uh, I think it's overtaking the blood. Uh, as the best story in wrestling so far, you know, as the best story in wrestling so far. Uh, all these guys are on top of their games. Uh, by the way, Brandon Cutler is the best dude in all of wrestling. 
I don't know how many times I have to say, this man is the best stooge, the best geek, you know, the best stooge, the best geek in all of wrestling. Nobody is better than Brandon Cutler. I hope that man has a lifetime, you know, I hope that man has a lifetime job with the AW. And I'm super and I'm super serious about this because Brandon Cutler is great entertainment life. This man is this man is great entertainment life, my God. But uh, you know, I'm really, you know, just enjoying the story, digging the storyline so far. Uh, with the elite and the uh, BCC. I know, I got to thinking, man. I got to thinking. You know who coming back, don't you? <laughs> you know who gonna cost the elite this feud, don't you? <laughs> Not CM Punk. He's gonna cost the elite this feud. I'm calling it that. He's gonna cost the elite this feud. If they do uh, anarchy in the arena, which I expect them to, you know, which I expect them to, Punk is gonna cost them that match. No. Punk is gonna come out. <laughs> No. Punk is going to come out. He's going to cost them that match right there. I'm telling you right now. Well, I don't think, I don't think he's going to because, um, I think they're they, they're going to do Anarchy in the Arena, and then I think they're going to do Blood and Guts right after that. So, we've got a couple more months, and then after Blood and Guts, we can get into the CM Punk and the Elite. Heading into all in. That's my theory. That's what I think. I don't know. I don't even know if Punk's coming back at this point. Do they even want him to? Is my question. I want him back. I miss Punk. I know they don't, but I I want him back. (laughs) I miss my man. I miss Punk, but I don't think they want him back, which is unfortunate. I don't know, man. I don't know. I definitely think that we're going to get anarchy in the arena. At double or nothing. And I think after double or nothing, a couple weeks after double or nothing, we're going to get blood and guts too. So, I don't know, man. I don't know if they start after, after, uh, um, you know, after uh, Forbidden Door, maybe. I don't know. But we read some rumors today that Dax Harwood said he wants to come back, he wants to wrestle. He misses wrestling. He's willing to do business with Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks if he wants to. And Cam, all I'm going to say is I'm not believing any of this until I actually see CM Punk on TBS. That's 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 what I'm going by. I miss it. I miss it. I miss it. I miss just I don't know about you, bro. I don't know about you, bro, but I'll be watching them punk. I'll be watching punk. I'll be watching them punk AEW highlights on YouTube. His promo battle with MJF. You know, his promo, you know, his promo, you know, his feud, you know, his feud with MJF. His promo against, you know, his promos against Team Taz, man. I'm just watching that. I'm just going, I miss this man. Oh, man, I'm just going, I miss this man on AEW television. Oh, man, I miss him. So please get your shit together, punk, so you can come back. Please get your shit together. I miss him too, man. So we'll see. Um, We had the outcasts, Ruby Soho and Tony Storm. They went against Riho and... um, They went against Riho and... uh, Sky Blue. Sky Blue. Sky Blue's all elite, so congrats to her. But... The outcast win in a few minutes, and I just, I just don't care about the outcast. I mean, I just don't care about this feud anymore, man. I know this is leading to something big, but you know, when are we gonna get that? You know, I just right now, I don't know what they're doing, and I'm kind of concerned about it. What do you think? Uh I thought this race is fine. The outcast. I'm with you, man. The outcast coming out each week and you know, spray painting people. I don't know what the fuck that's about. I'm not a fan of them coming out there spray painting people every week. I don't know what the hell that's about. You know, I don't you know, I don't know what the you know, I don't know what the hell that is about. But you know, I'm I'm liking the stuff they're doing so far. I'm I'm digging a few. It's just I don't understand why they gotta come out and spray paint people. I mean, I think you know, I don't understand why they have to come out and spray paint people. I mean, that spray paint shit is absolutely fucking stupid. I don't know what's this. I don't know what that is supposed to symbolize or what. But I, 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 I'm not a fan of that. I'm not a fan of that at all. You know, I'm not a fan of that at all. 
but I am digging the few. I am digging the few with them so far. Uh, although part of me does wish they would switch up the feud a little bit because they need to do. Uh, it's, it's starting to get very repetitive. You know, starting to get very repetitive. But I mean, the Outcasts have a match. You know what I mean? The Outcasts have a match. They'll spray. You know, the Outcasts have a match. They'll sp- they'll spray that out. They'll spray that. You know, they'll spray the spray paint. You know, they'll spray the spray. They'll spray the spray paint. Uh, Reha and Sky Blue come out to make the save. They get beat now. Jamie Hader and Britt Baker then come out to make the save. Or it's the opposite. Re- or it's the opposite. Jamie Hader and Britt Baker come out to make the save. They get beat down. Then Reha and Sky Blue make the save. Then they have a match. You know, then they have the match against Tony Storm. And then it's the same shit every week. I'm not a fan of that shit. I'm not a fan of it being the same thing every week. And for those of you that are going to, for the AW dick suckers that are going to come on here in this track and go, you aren't watching the show, Kim. You are watching the show, Kim. Are you honestly going to sit there and tell me that what they did last, that, that, that they did the same shit last week or the week before, which is come out, get beat down, Reho, Jamie Hayes, Sky Blue, Britt Baker, come out and make the save. Are you honestly going to tell me it's not the same thing? Because it is. It is the exact same thing. I wish they would switch that up. I, I wish they would switch that up. But it is what it is. I want no, to see like each other every week. Why? Why do I, the elite and BCC are wrestling each other every week. Why? Why do they have to wrestle each other every fucking week? Every fucking. Can we switch this up, please? Can we switch it up? Can we get Jamie Hader and Ali on an episode of Dynamite? Well, I know we already had that, but still, Ali sucks. But still, can we get that? Where's where the fuck is Nyla Rose at? Can we get Nyla Rose against one of these women? Can we get some more variety and depth with these women's matches, please? It's the same shit every. Fucking weak. No, I, 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 I totally feel you, man. I totally feel you. But th- with what they do, with what Tony books every week, I'm just not, I'm not interested. And every week, I'm losing interest, and I'm losing interest, and I'm losing interest. And at some point, it's just going to be like just end the feud already. So I don't know. Uh, hopefully we don't get the same thing next week, but we are getting Britt and Jamie against uh, uh, Tony Storm and Ruby Soho next week. The main event, Chris Jericho against Keith Lee. Uh, may I add, it's been a while since we've seen Keith and Swerve on Dynamite, so it was it was good to see them and see them building up what they got going. Uh, Keith Lee and Jericho... I thought they put on a very good match for what it was. Chris Jericho did win, but they did protect Keith Lee. Daniel Garcia was being a nudge to Aubrey Edwards. Uh, uh, Swerve Strickland was wearing a hood. He came in. He hit Keith Lee in the face with a steel chair, walked into the crowd, took off his hood. It revealed himself that it was him. Jericho just laid on to Keith Lee and pinned him for the one, two, three. He got the win. And um, Keith, uh, Chris Jericho beats Keith Lee. And then after the match, Adam Cole comes out. He does the same thing that Jericho did to him two weeks ago, which is just kind of look back at him and then walk away. And then he was walking up with Keith Lee. So we're building up to Adam Cole versus Chris Jericho at the pay-per-view. And I think we're back to building up Keith Lee versus Swerve which is a great thing to see. So I'm happy to see both of them back on Dynamite and building up their feud. Uh, Cam, thoughts on the main event? It is a great thing to see. It is a great thing to see, but I thought this is a really good match between Chris Jericho and Pastor Lee. Uh, you know, between Chris Jericho and uh, Pastor Lee, I thought this was a very good match between these guys here. Uh, first time ever match, I wouldn't mind seeing this as a, I wouldn't mind seeing this as a feud later on down the road. Now, uh, later on in the summer, when uh, Keith Lee gets Tony Swerve, I, I would not mind seeing Jericho and Keith Lee as a you know Jericho and Keith Lee as a feud. But I thought this was a pretty good. But I thought this was a pretty good match here, and uh, the Bills, you know, that was a pretty good match here. Uh, you know, Sir Two Purpose Swerve looked good in the loss. You know, uh, Swerve Keith Lee. There you go. Keith Lee looked good in the loss, and it builds up uh, Jericho and Cole on pay per view. I have no choice. Yep, absolutely, man. So. 
That's going to wrap it up for tonight. Thank you all so much for joining myself and Cameron Johnson on the Big Fight Fuel channel. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the Big Fight Fuel channel. Tap the bell for all notifications for videos that's going to be coming up on the Big Fight Fuel channel in the next couple of weeks. Um, hit the like button if you like what you heard from myself and Cameron Johnson. Leave a comment down below your thoughts on tonight's episode of AEW Dynamite. And you can follow me on Twitter and TikTok at Conlon underscore Joseph. Cam, where can everyone follow you, my friend? Uh, well, well, if you would like to follow me on Twitter, I would very much appreciate it. I, I would very much appreciate it. You can follow me on Twitter at Cam Summer 1101. Again, that's only if you want to. It's not a requirement. No, it's not like, you know, you know, it's not like I'm like, you know, you know, it's not like I'm going to find out where you live. You know, it's not like I'm going to find out where you live and, you know, breaking your house and steal your stuff until you follow me. You know, it's not like I'm going to do that at all. You know, it's not like I'm going to do that at all. But, you know, yeah, but, but, you know, if you would like to follow me on Twitter, you can follow me there. I can't have one on one. Yeah. I appreciate it. And guys, that's going to be it. I'll see you all for the next one. Have a good night. Stay safe, and as always, stay classy. I'm out. Peace. Peace.